Hi, my name is Sam Cusimano, and welcome to Electricity for Progress. Today, we're going to be exploring a biodata sonification device produced by Data Garden called the Plant Wave. This is a new device that they've made with a uh, new engineer and programmer, Manuel. I'll give you a link to his uh, electronics page and some of the other works that he does. Uh, and they have made a biodata sonification unit similar to the MIDI Sprout, which I developed with Data Garden a few years back. And now with the added benefits of Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity, which is also very, very cool. Uh, so this is the package, and uh, I figured I'd do a little unboxing, look at the device. Uh, of course, we'll take it apart, look at the insides, and then we'll test it out. I also have an original uh, MIDI Sprout new in box right here, uh, which we can try out also in order to A, B the two devices next to each other and see how their functionality compares. So let's dive in. Okay, so Joe, John, and the rest of the Data Garden team have been sending out plant waves to a variety of folks uh, with a nice little letter about how to test and give them feedback. I'm very pleased that they included me in the testing process, and uh, you know, I like the paper. It's uh, like a brown recycled paper. Data Garden is very true to their goals of uh, being sustainable and using recycled materials. You see here, even this box is a uh, is a nice recyclable uh, or even potentially 100% recycled chipboard. So very cool. Uh, included in my kit, and again, this is not their production model. This is really the test model that they sent to me. So there's going to be some differences, and I'll try to call them out, uh, which they mentioned to me in an email. Uh, so here's the cables. We'll look at those in a minute. Uh, they say they're going to have some nice, pretty uh, white cables that are going to come with everything. And let's just open up the box. All right, so again, here we have some nice paper packing material. And... Oh, check that out. So this looks very similar to the design of the previous MIDI Sprout, which makes me very happy. Worked very hard on that design. Uh, the package looks great in uh, this 3D printed material. They say that the uh, actual material they're going to use for the production units is a little bit different than this. Um, and there's a couple, you know, a couple little imperfections from a 3D printer, some Z wobble on here, uh, which is probably just an artifact of uh, how they printed these test modules up. But this looks really, really cool. Um, on the side, we see a switch and a button. Here's a little hole, I suppose, that's going to be used for an LED. Um, there is, of course, instructions, but we're not going to mess with the instructions now. I will, of course, read them later. Uh, here's a port on the side and a port on the front. USB-C. Really great uh, to see USB-C on a device. And then here's two other holes on the side here, probably also for some status LEDs. Um, so I'm, of course, really excited to uh, see this thing in action. And I'm sure uh, everyone wants to see it hooked up with uh, serial direct cables with uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth MIDI, and I'll definitely do that. But um, why turn it on when we can take it apart? Right? So. I'm going to start this adventure uh, with a little splunger here and see if I can pop open the bottom of the case. It looks like it's uh, some 3D printed tabs uh, and it seems to be actually very securely fast on there. Yep, and so it's a couple little joining tabs. Very nice. Inside here we see a very bulky, uh, large battery here. That's really great. Uh, 2,000 milliamp hour battery in here. Really good choice. Uh, this is going to give a lot of power, especially for the power intensive work, not of Bluetooth and BLE, of course, but of Wi-Fi. And one of the cool things about this is it uh, uses uh, RTP MIDI, connects to uh, Wi-Fi MIDI ports. Very, very cool, but takes a lot of power to drive a uh, Wi-Fi chip for that. And Let's see, I'm just going to try to pop this whole unit out, ah, and it comes out really easily. That's great. We see a uh, little translucent diffuser there between 
the uh, the LEDs on the board and the uh, outside of the enclosure. That's cool. And then here's a little 3D printed button cap. Yeah, very, very nice prints here, guys. Uh, and here is the plant wave in all its glory, right? Not much, uh, not much on there. It's uh, the top of the board is just uh, LEDs. It looks like five LEDs, very consistent with the previous design. And of course, the IO. Um, coming under here, I'm going to just unplug the battery because uh, there's a nice JST connector on there. Put it to the side. Uh, we see that there's a couple standoffs here. That's great. Some nylon standoffs. We're not getting a nice perfect focus here. Here we go. So you can see here that we have an Espressive ESP32 module. That's really nice to see on there with its built-in antenna. Of course, the uh, the 3D printed enclosure, whether it's cork or plastic, ABS or PLA, probably one of their plant-based plastics, I'm sure. Uh, the Wi-Fi will go right through that easily. And uh, we can also see a bunch of little tiny surface mount components on there. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to bring over a little tiny screwdriver and try to undo these nylon standoffs just so we can get a look at the main board. Uh, you'll so, of course, immediately notice that there is a daughter board on here and that it's totally separate. Uh, this is a recommendation that I had made a while back, and I'm sure that in uh, Data Gardens research they found it also. You need to have electrical separation between the galvanic conductance sensor, the 555 timer, and the rest of the uh, hardware. And if you don't, you're going to get some grounding issues when you plug it into USB, um, similar to the way a medical device works. Uh, you in the hospital would have a very uh, isolated power supply, and then the sensors themselves also have a lot of isolation. Okay, here on this uh, daughter board from the main board, we can see the input, and this is what's used for the electrode probes to come in. Uh, we can see the uh, pull-up resistor right here, and this is, I suppose, the 555 timer I see. I don't recognize the uh, the code on there, but I haven't really looked it up very much. Uh, it looks exactly like the pinout of the 555 timer, so I assume it is one. Uh, over here we see an opto isolator. This is going to be used for the pulses coming out of the 555 timer. They're on pin 3. And then this is a power isolation IC that's being used. Uh, this header here allows the voltage to come up. I would suppose it's 3 volts uh, ground and then also the uh, signal coming back down into the main board from the pulse output. And again, isolated there. Very, very nice. I love this isolation on the board. Let's pull up the main board. And not to discount also, it costs quite a bit to have a daughter board. And I'm really, really uh, pleased and impressed that Data Garden took the time and money and engineering and design to, to put a separate isolated daughter board in. That's going to give you a much, much cleaner signal from the plants, uh, you know, at least isolating this galvanic conductance sensor. So let's look at the main board. Uh, here we see the Espresso ESP32 chip, very nice uh, BLE, Wi-Fi, uh, great processor in there, uh, very, very cool. Uh, down here we have the USB-C. Uh, this chip, I suppose, is the USB-C uh, power regulating chip, does all the smart stuff that USB-C requires, and also likely is a part of the uh, charging circuit here for the LiPo battery. Uh, over here we see this jack. This is, I believe, for the serial MIDI data. It's going to be sent out. And then here we see an Atmel microcontroller. I believe it's a 16mu2 microcontroller, and it's associated uh, crystal oscillator. Uh, and then a couple passives all around managing, I suppose, the uh, power switch and the, the button input. Uh, and then on the back of the board, again, very clean, the PlantWave logo. Here, let's put it that way. Yeah, PlantWave logo. This looks really cool. It's got the waves. Looks almost like a fingerprint on there. Very cool. Uh, I'm, I'm partial to the MIDI Sprout name, of course, but MIDI isn't the uh, most user-serviceable title. Uh, those who are in the know know this is much better for, uh, I think, the general public or a, a general user to at least begin to understand what's going on and be able to use this with their plants. Very cool. Uh, and then the LEDs for the light show. 
All right, so with that, I'm going to package this back up and uh, we'll actually turn it on and see how this device functions. One moment. Okay, I've reassembled the plant wave here and uh, now let's turn it on and check out uh, how it works and what it does. I really like the startup light show. On the original MIDI Sprout, that startup light show helped me understand if the code was installed properly and make sure the device is actually ready to be used. So I'm really pleased that that's been maintained in this new version. Okay, over on the side here, uh, you can see the LED here for uh, the power, I believe. So let me just turn it off and then that lights off. Turn it on over here and you see it's on again. Okay, on the far side here, I believe these two are actuated when uh, you actually had power. So let me turn my lights back on here. Okay. And I'm going to uh, quickly open up the little package which Data Garden sent me, and we'll go through what the contents are. Uh, so we have three pairs of TENS electrodes, uh, small ovals. Uh, very nice. These are uh, safe for the plants. These are washable, reusable. Uh, here we have a USB-C to a USB-A cable. Very nice. Uh, they said, of course, these cables are also going to come in white when they do their final production run. So that's going to look really, really clean. Uh, here is some electrodes that appear to have been custom made uh, with flat clips on the side uh, rather than alligator clips. Don't put alligator clips on your plants. Um, don't put alligator clips on your friends. These are actually nice though. They're little flat teeth and there's not a lot. They're not super, super tight, right? There's enough spring to them. So I think this would be good for use with smaller leaves uh, on plants, something like a blueberry bush or something, uh, some shrubs, <laughs> honestly. You plug that into the shrubbery. Very cool. And they said, of course, I think this is also going to come in white. That's going to look really smooth. And of course, uh, my favorite thing in the world, right? Your standard uh, electrode snaps. Interestingly, though, this looks like it's not a 3.5 millimeter jack. This looks like a one of the like two and change jacks. Hmm. Perhaps on the device. They have a standard 3.5 millimeter stereo jack being used for the MIDI output. Oh yeah, and then over here, it's a smaller jack to be used with the electrodes. That's actually really good. That means that you can't get confused about which cable plugs into where. I like that. That's going to be very good for the end user. And these uh, snap electrodes, many TENS units use the 2.1, I think it is, or 2.5, I'm not sure, uh, millimeter jack standard. On the MIDI Sprout, we use the 3.5 millimeter just because that's the kind of uh, mechanical plug that I was familiar with. Very nice, guys. So we have a standard 3.5 for the MIDI, and here we have a smaller one for the electrodes. All right, cool. And so I'm just going to touch the trodes with my fingers, and uh, I can see that this lights up. Again, here, let me just turn the lights off a little bit so you can see. There it is. Very, very pretty, uh, the way that the biodata unit lights up and shows that notes are being made when I touch this device. Uh, here, I have uh, some electrodes already on a plant over here, but <laughs> just to show you, but you can see clearly that the two jacks are different size. No bother though at all. I'll simply snap these on to my plant. Okay, now we have our uh, electrodes connected to the leaves of a snake plant over here. And I will plug this into the connector on the side. And once again, you can see the light show uh, shines bright. And we can see how the plant is reacting uh, in a lot of ways. Cool. Uh, of course, this is just the light show. Next, we need to make some MIDI happen, right? Um, I'm going to start with a uh, standard serial MIDI, just to talk about it for a quick second. And uh, I've got with me right here 
one of my MIDI molts, uh, Electricity for Progress, produces modular synthesizer uh, utility modules mostly. This is a MIDI multiple with a input. You either have your 5-pin DIN input or a 3.5 millimeter uh, jack input stereo. And that then translates and is repeated over these four outputs, uh, essentially giving you a through or a MIDI molt. Um, this is great for connecting a bunch of old school hardware to your modular synth setup that already uses MIDI. And I have included those 3.5 millimeter jacks in order to make the MIDI easy to jack into those other modules. And then on the back, I've got some switches associated with the standards, the type A and type B of the 3.5 millimeter standard. So this is just going to be used though in this example. Uh, in order to help me bust the MIDI, here I have an EMU uh, USB MIDI device. We're going to be using a MIDI input uh, on there. And I'm actually just going to be plugging these both into the input up here. Not the way it's supposed to be used, but I'm using it as just a converter, right? To convert the 5-pin DIN over to the 3.5 millimeter. So I'm going to plug this in here and we'll see if it works right off the bat. And if not, I will then move some stuff around, really flick this switch and see if I can get whether it's uh, A, type A or type B. I believe they use type A, which is the tip is the data and the ring is pulled high is the high current. So let's plug this in. Okay. And it doesn't look like I'm getting any MIDI into my computer. Let me just flick the switch back here and see if that helps. Oh, here we go. All right. So now I'm going to pop this on. And what do we see? Well, uh, we see a whole bunch of MIDI flowing in here. Uh, for my input, I'm going to filter out the control messages. There we go. And we see a whole bunch of note on, note offs coming in here. Great. Now we know that the plant's banging out some MIDI notes. And they all seem to be centered here in the 50s. Uh, I'm going to turn my control back on here in the filter and see, okay, we have control coming in and it's uh, CC80 that I see rolling around. So it's very similar to the way that the original MIDI Sprout worked. Super cool. Uh, now that we have this serial connection going on, um, I think I'm going to try out the, uh, the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi. So give me one second to move some things around and then we'll try that setup out. Okay, now let's try and configure our Bluetooth and Wi-Fi settings on the plant wave in order to get that data into our uh, MacBook Pro. Here is my example. And I have the MIDI Studio open over here that we'll use to access certain settings. Uh, to begin with, though, let's go to our Wi-Fi and connect to plant wave. Right? So there's the plant wave network. It's great that it's just sitting there waiting for me. And then in the instructions, it says go to 192.168.4.1. And I didn't get anything. Let's see. Let's try that again. 192.168.4.1. There we go. Plant wave controls in the house. Uh, here, I've got a dark filter on. Let's turn that off. Okay, it's just a basic page, which is great. There's no reason to have a fancy page sitting on this particular device. Uh, although maybe, uh, you know, something nice, a clean background color, kind of like the uh, app could be thrown in, but I'm going to turn my dark filter back on. Cool. So our battery level is displayed at the top, 55% of the battery. That's really cool. Um, I should be charging it, I suppose. Uh, settings. Here it allows us to connect to a different Wi-Fi network, or of course to have uh, and then to name our device. Naming is going to be really cool because then if we have multiple plant waves, then we can connect multiple of these devices to the same Wi-Fi network. Uh, and in this way, you can have a whole array of plants being sonified at the same time and feeding that data together to a centralized computer or even potentially the internet. Very cool. Uh, danger zone. I love it. Turn off Wi-Fi. Uh, there's factory reset and then there's a uh, clearing BLE. So very simple settings going on here. Uh, that's really great. Uh, there's Bluetooth app and factory reset. Cool. So I suppose that maybe pressing the button, you can get a factory reset going on here. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some method for uploading code to it also, probably just directly on the device using USB-C. Uh, but for now, let's use my uh, network. Oh, how do you like that? 
and let's put our passcode in here. All right, and we'll save. Okay, we won't do that. But now we're uh, saving our credentials on here. It's rebooting. And uh, let's see here. We'll now go back to our home Wi-Fi, Oxford East. All right, hopefully the plant wave will connect to it. Um, and I believe that I can access, yes, yes, the uh, that configuration panel again here at plantwave.local. Let's see if that works. Again, no guarantee that he's connected to my Wi-Fi yet. I don't really know. But uh, ooh, plant wave local control, check that out. Oh, it looks really nice now that it's on the local uh, network. And there's a lot of, uh... wow, check out all these settings. This is great stuff, guys. We have a couple pages, MIDI sensitivity. There's Bluetooth updates can be drawn here. Uh, wow, this is really fun. MIDI mode, so we have USB serial and USB MIDI. We know that USB, uh, well, actually, we don't know. We haven't tried USB MIDI yet. Mm, that's going to be fun. Here we have our channel configurations, our note scale. Oh, wow, yeah, you can choose a scale in here. Uh, I wonder if we'll be able to add our own scales, possibly through the app. Uh, and then we have polyphony, so channel one, chromatic scale, five note polyphony, that's the standard uh, MIDI sprout configs that we had. There's also some memory limitations, so I didn't really bump up the polyphony higher than that. Also, when you have more than five notes from a single plant, it can get cacophonous quickly, uh, but it's cool that you can bump that up here. Here we have LED brightness, so that's the light show. Let me just move this down. So the light show, you can't see it as well here because I've got really bright lights on, but I'm sure at night this light show gets really blindingly bright. And that was a challenge with the original MIDI Sprout also. Uh, so we have an LED brightness setting, and then here's the CC number, the MIDI CC that comes out of it, so you can set that control. Really great. Factory resets, uh, a variety of other controls going on here. I'm really pleased to check this out and say, hey, good work, guys. Uh, this looks really cool. I'm going to click the settings panel, see if there's anything different in these sub-settings pages. Uh, no, that's just, I suppose, these different zones here. Yeah. And these are just links that show you the data that's on this main page. Cool. All right, so we're connected to Wi-Fi. We know that we're connected to my Wi-Fi, Oxford East. And so I'm going to scoot this back over here. Let's try to set up our RTP MIDI Wi-Fi. So I'm going to click on this uh, globe icon here, and we see our MIDI network set up. Uh, we see a bunch of uh, ESP32s and Biodatas, things that I've been running for MIDI networks previously, and boom, look at that! Plant waves just sitting there with a green dot next to it. Well, I'm going to click Connect, and like magic, we are receiving MIDI. This is really excellent. So now we have our MIDI data coming in through RTP MIDI, um, Let's see, we're uh, doing a couple things here. Let's not spy on our outputs. And let's not look at our IAC bus. There we go. So now we just have Biodata Internet, which is this session that I have here. If you haven't already configured a MIDI network setup uh, session, you should also Google and, and understand how MIDI network sessions go. Here we can see our latency as it's popping around a little bit. Um, you know, it's a MIDI network. Uh, we're, we're floating around, what, 10 milliseconds? And this is biodata, so we're not you know, in dire need of critical timing here. We're not running multiple drum machines or synchronizing video. We're making music with plants. And speaking of music, we haven't heard anything, right? Done all this stuff. Now I've got this MIDI data flowing through Wi-Fi. That's really cool, but what's it sound like? Let's pop up some Ableton Live right here. I'm going to come over here and start recording this MIDI. Let's look at what we're dealing with. So in this track, and I intend to AB the MIDI sprout next to Plant Wave here, we can see our notes banging out. This really looks exactly like the MIDI that normally comes through uh, from my snake plant with the MIDI sprout. Mm, very exciting. I wonder how you change the threshold and other things. Oh, that's what the app is for. Okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll have to pull out 
an old iPhone and try out the app here in a second. All right, I'm going to hit stop. Take this out. Wow. Okay. So that's uh, that's really cool. Uh, so we've got our MIDI data flowing in. The bio data system works. We're able to get that MIDI data here into Ableton Live, make some sounds, and also capture that MIDI data right here. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, so next, let's take this a little bit further. And uh, I will move my MIDI down there, and I'll move Biodata Sonification Plant Wave unit up there, and then this is my iPhone. Okay, well, I'm sure it's not on, so. Let's try out the app, see how that goes. Okay, we're here with uh, an old iPhone. This might be a 7. Uh, it's screen's broken, things like that. I mean, the only appropriate iPhone is an old iPhone with a broken screen, right? Ooh, YouTube music. I have to scroll up. Well, let's check out the app. So we have the old MIDI Sprout out app up there, but I'm going to click on Plant Wave right here. And, oops, there we go. Just click on it once. Ah. All right. Here's Plant Wave. Sorry about the glare. Uh, it's a simple looking little app right here. Uh, this is not the final version. Uh, you know, this is beta version. Still in testing. I know uh, there's builds being pushed all the time, but uh, I know we can make some other changes and settings in here. I'm just going to tap the connect button up at the top because look at it. We've got, you know, a couple little buttons on there, but if we click connect, uh, and then we're going to see, we're going to click uh, connect plant wave. All right, let's try that. Ready to connect. Press and hold the pairing button to put your device in pairing mode. Okay, I guess that's this button right here. Oh, my device is here. We go. It sees it already. So I'm going to click plant wave. All right. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's already making music. So you're probably only hearing this through the lav mic. Sorry, I'll try to get a, a better line in for another exhibition of this app. Okay, cool. If I click that button, it pauses it. So the bio data is now flowing into, you see my computer at the bottom there, uh, and that's through Wi-Fi, but we're connected now to my iPhone via Bluetooth BLE, and we can sonify here too. And this device, or this app, allows you to choose a couple of different parameters for different instruments. I'm sure that it's going to get really robust and uh, have lots of variable parameters and stuff. I'm just going to run through a couple of them now for fun. So I hit the play button and that allows that MIDI data to flow. And I'll click the next button. Ooh. Enchanted Forest. New sound set. Oh, I guess this may be something that I haven't yet configured in the app. So we have a couple sounds right off the bat in here. Uh, it sounds really nice. I'll pause it again. But more than anything, the cool thing here to me is that we have Wi-Fi MIDI flowing into my laptop. We have Bluetooth MIDI that's connecting to this phone, and it's all happening at the same time. I bet you we could also have serial MIDI coming out, this jack, and probably also uh, USB MIDI all at the same time. I will try that and show it to you, but not today. Uh, yeah, sorry to be so pleased with this, but I'm really, really pleased uh, with what's going on here. This device looks great. Uh, it feels really good. The experience of connecting everything was very, very easy. Let's get rid of this iPhone. Of course, everyone would say, hey, is it going to have an Android app? Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll press them for that myself. Um, the iPhone app works really well. And of course, you know, everyone's got a broken iPhone lying around somewhere that you can always load that on. Uh, it's not a walled garden, right? We were already able to get serial MIDI out of this, and uh, we're able to get Wi-Fi MIDI out of it. So you don't really even, well, you need the app to configure it, of course. Um, but once it's configured, it's just ready to rock. Okay, well, that's going to wrap up our session for today. Uh, I'll have another session where I'll compare this uh, plant wave with an original MIDI sprout, look at the MIDI data. Uh, see if there's any differences or if the, the code base and hardware are the same, then you'll have similar outcomes. And if there's any questions that anybody has about this, I'll try to answer what I have. Definitely check out Data Garden's website and their PlantWave site. 
Uh, I believe you can pre-order these. Um, I know a few more iterations are going to go on with the application for iPhone, and uh, I think that's going to look really good in the end. And hopefully I'll be able to uh, give uh, another review later on once all of the revisions are finalized. So uh, good work to Manuel, to Joe, and to John, and the entire Data Garden team. Uh, congrats on this device, and hopefully other people are having a good time with it also. Uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.